Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril. I used to be a stem cell researcher. And this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare ingredients. And for today's video, we are going to talk about a very well-known French brand, which is Aven in French or Avin in English. So very similar to uh, La Roche-Posay, but it is also the same case for uh, Uriage, for example. Aven, the name, is coming from a small city that is in the south of France, not very far from uh, another big city in France, which is Montpellier. So the old story behind Aven is also pretty similar to La Roche-Posay or even Uriage. They are all based on thermal water with the idea that this water has some health benefits, which is why in all those brands you also find uh, those type of product, which is basically a, a water mist. So it's simply the water from the brand. This one is from uh, Bioderma. This one is slightly different, but they basically all the same. It is water with some mineral that seems to have some property for the skin. To tell you the truth, if you use them or you don't use them, you are not going to see any difference but this is i would say um, a skincare step that is pleasant uh, to do i like to miss my face just after washing it but basically doesn't uh, do much from this also a little disclaimer because this is water the ph is of seven so it's pretty high compared to the skin ph so i mean it doesn't really make sense if you like to do it keep on doing it but it's not going to change your skin whether it is from avin bioderma uriage or uh, whatever. So you will see that with Avin, and I think this is very different from uh, La Roche-Posay because in general, I really dislike La Roche-Posay. There are some products where I like them, especially the sunscreen. I have two videos about the sunscreen, especially the ultra cream. My God, this one is so good. So you can also check it out. I also have other video about La Roche-Posay, one on the Yellow B5 line. This is an old video. Um, of mine and I really dislike this line and also have a more global video I would say about La Roche-Posay where I basically trash most of the product I'm really not a big fan of. For Avin it's a little bit different because most of the product I don't really like them or I find them like very so-so and for the price I would likely recommend something else so it's uh, pretty a no for me but they are not like horrendous I have to say but they have some lines that are really, really excellent. And I want to start with what I really dislike and I will end this video on a positive note with what other products that I really recommend and why I like them and uh, etc. because they are very uh, specific and I would say unique. So the first line that I want to talk about is the one meant to reduce the redness. Uh, I have to say that the active in this line is like mm -hmm, very so-so. So the old line is based on dextran sulfate. So dextran sulfate, there are a couple of papers, but almost none that show that it can reduce the redness on the skin. The problem, again, like in most actives for the skin, it has only been demonstrated in vitro which is very far from what happens in vivo because you are putting everything on top of the skin barrier and not on the live cells that are uh, behind the stratum corneum. Uh, also, when you are prone to wetness, it could be due to uh, many different factors simply because you have very fair skin and the blood vessels are very close to the surface. And you can know this, but when you touch your skin, you can see a, f a flush, it also could do uh, because you are allergic to something. This is my case. Usually when I have redness around my nose, it's because I have a lot of allergies. And when I keep blowing my nose, my skin is simply irritating and inflamed. And if I treat my allergies, the redness um, is gone. It also could be due because you have uh, rosacea and you can, on top of it, react to some uh, ingredient. The problem with this line is that uh, most products contain fragrance. Why put damp fragrance, especially for sensitive skin, this I will never understand it. So I do believe that Aven, uh, very similar to La Roche-Posay and also Riage, even though they, they use perfume, they're probably not using the fragrant uh, molecule that are really well known to trigger allergic reaction. But still, for sensitive skin, it's a big, big no-no to use uh, fragrance. This is for sure, or essential oils, or a lot of botanical uh, acid because the skin barrier is so impaired that all those components can really go deep down in the skin and react with the immune cells with and then trigger an allergic reaction and so on. So no perfume, please. Another thing that I really dislike is that if you look at some on the product on the redness uh, relief is that they contain also dyes 
blue dyes. Why they contain blue dyes is probably because they want to color the cream to co sort of color correct the redness. I mean, this is skincare. This is not makeup. Also, again, some people can react to dyes. So again, it doesn't really make sense. And this is not the perfect cream to help to repair your skin barrier. It would be so much better to use for example, a face cream full of ceramide and precursors of ceramide such as sphingosine that are like really the key uh, components to have a healthy skin barrier. You have those one from this product from Melta MD. This is the barrier renewal complex. Probably it will not be moisturizing enough and you will have, need to add another moisturizer. On top of it, this one is an excellent one to consider, for example, for impaired skin barrier. Also in this line, they have basically uh, two creams one cream, one emulsion, they also have a soothing mask. So the cream and the emulsion, they do have uh, an SPF, which I really dislike because this is an SPF of 20. I mean, come on, you, if you're not new to my channel, you will know that I only recommend here SPF 50. Plus, I mean, it is better than not having any uh, sun protection, but if you have sensitive skin, you cannot exclude the fact that you will react to one of the filters, which is why it is very important to have a dedicated moisturizer to really help to repair your skin and have another sunscreen on the side that will be compatible with your skin type. And I have a lot of recommendation on my channel and I will definitely have to make a full video and recommend you sunscreen for sensitive um, skin. But this is very gimmicky to me. And again, it doesn't make sense when you have sensitive skin, this is not what you want to do. So now let's move on to the Cleanance line. So the Cleanance in French is basically the old line dedicated to treat uh, acne. And again, it is very so-so. And they have also two products that I do think are very dramatic and are very old school, but in the wrong, wrong uh, way. So first of all, when you have acne, something that is so, so important is to be sure that you really have acne. This is something that is extremely common, but still, I like to mention it. Don't um, self-diagnose uh, yourself because from time to time, what you can have on your face is could be not acne. Some red uh, pimples, for example, can pass for acne and can be uh, eczema, for example, or an irritation towards an ingredient and etc. So just be mindful of this. Also, depending on the acne that you have, most likely you will need to see a dermatologist and not seek any uh, knowledge or something from a skincare blogger, from a YouTuber, for someone who treats acne at home and etc. One of the reasons is because if you have an acne, that have a tendency to lead scars and by scars, I mean like true indentation on the skin, not post-inflammatory um, marks on your skin, like the red hue or hyperpigmentation, like the mark that will basically never disappear. You need to consult a dermatologist to have a potent treatment to really help and manage your acne. Also remember something that is very terrible with acne is that it needs time. The treatment, whether it is with over the counter skincare or with a dermatologist, you need to wait a minimum of two months to three months to see the first uh, results. This is very unfortunate, but this is how it works. Also, the um, active that you need to look for are salicylic acid, glycolic acid in the form of an AHA. It, it also could be a retinoid. It also could be a uh, bacucol, for example. Um, what else? Uh, zinc. Zinc is also an excellent one. It also could be uh, some clay mask. They can also help to uh, manage some of the oil, um, oiliness. But basically, they are uh, sulfur also. I forgot sulfur. Sulfur also is an excellent one. But none of these ingredients are in the Cleanance uh, line. So the worst two products from the Cleanance line, the first one is the Bloody Mattifying Lotion. This one is basically Kaolin, which is a clay. This one is excellent but it is packed with alcohol and something that you really need to forget, especially when you have acne, that sebum, even though it is one of the key component of the acne, it is not the absolute devil. And if you dry out your skin like crazy, most of the time it is not going to solve your acne, but it is also going to trigger even more inflammation in your skin because your skin will be so dry and you will have an impaired skin, an impaired skin barrier. So you don't want to add to the inflammation, which is why I am so against alcohol, especially 
uh, when you are suffering from uh, acne. Another major con in all this line is that most of the product also contains perfume. Again, acne is a very inflammatory disease, so you don't want to add to the inflammation. The other product that is terrible is the new one. It is the Comedo Men, and here I'm going to pop that list of ingredients. It is a very short list of ingredients, but as you can see, what you have as a bloody second ingredient is isopropyl alcohol, so it is a very, very drying alcohol. This one, again, is terrible, and you also have um, a plant extract. So I haven't looked at the literature about this one, but this is definitely not one that pop up um, often to treat acne. If you have some any result from it, it is probably from the isopropyl uh, alcohol that is, again, so damaging for the skin barrier, so no. They have one product that is probably the best in the whole line, but again, I don't know the concentration of the active, which is very unfortunate, which is the triacnil expert. So this one is based on retinol, also known as retinol, the eye that will be converted into in your skin into tretinoin, and tretinoin is one of the gold standard uh, treatment to cure acne, or you can also have adapalene that is very similar to tretinoin, but this is a topic for a dermatologist. But anyway, retinol, there is indeed, uh, I think one or two papers, something like that, to show that it can help with acne. And in my own end, retinol is also a good one, especially for the type of acne when you have a lot of blackheads and white uh, heads. But again, it has perfume, so I'm like, mm -mm -mm it is really not um, optimal. So overall, this line is rough. The other line that I'm not going to describe it for a long time is the Hydrance line. So it's very similar to the one that you have from Bioderma, the Hydra Bio. So the whole idea is to simply hydrate your skin. So here again, the formula are pretty simple. It is not overly bad because it does not contain a lot of botanical extra that can trigger allergy, it doesn't contain also uh, essential oils but it does contain uh, perfume and also the level of humectants are so-so. And something that I um, always explain in my channel, especially with moisturizing your skin, there is two very important criteria. The first one are the humectants. The humectants are the molecules in skincare that are going to attract the water into your skin. And then you had on top of this emollient and occlusive to lock in this water. And depending on your skin, type. If you have super dry skin, you will need a lot of emollient and a lot of occlusive. And conversely, if you have uh, oily skin or normal to oily skin, you will need less to very uh, few emollient and occlusive. And here, this is very, very standard. There is nothing that is amazing. And frankly, if you really want to have a product that does have perfume, in that case, choose the Hydrabio line from Bioderma. That is far more better simply because the humectant, the blend of humectants is so much better than what you get from uh, Avin. So overall, this line is um, a no for me and I would say a waste of money. So the line for anti-aging, so they have, um, I, if I recall correctly, three different lines. So the first one, uh, and they have some new product, especially here in France because I forgot to, to mention that all the products that I'm going to show you today are the one that you can get in France. I do know that, for example, in the United States, Avin has some different products, especially for the sunscreen that I'm going to talk at the end, uh, that I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. So the new line is the Air Oxidive line. So uh, it is quite new, or at least one of the product is. So if you just look at the name, it seems to be, um, the line to be antioxidant. The best antioxidant that we have, by the way, is uh, sunscreen. The other one that we know is, of course, vitamin C, vitamin E, and different form of vitamin E. It is also all the derivatives of, of course, of vitamin C, especially one which is the palmitite derivative of um, L-ascorbic acid, which is the vitamin C. Uh, we also have a uh, resveratrol, even though it is not fully demonstrated. The superoxide dismutase also, even though I have to say that the data on it is uh, a bit so, so but this is not the topic of this video. And again, it is pretty disappointing. So this line is based on one derivative of vitamin C, which is ascorbyl glucoside. It is not the worst one, but I would have gone with the palmitate form in that case. 
anyway and also on uh, vitamin E and basically that's it so I mean for the price it is not um, incredible the rest of the formula is pretty simple again they have perfume so it, it's really so so they have uh, one that seems uh, I would say more promising again I don't know the concentration which I really dislike it is named the oxidative peeling cream why they peeling here I don't know because the active is again retinol also known as retinal the eye so it is true that uh, those retinoids so retinol retinal and also tretinoin what they're going to do especially in the beginning is that they are going to thin out the very top surface of your skin so the skin barrier but after the tolerance period it will become thicker and most of the time you will need to reintroduce um, a peeling agents in the form basically of an AHA most of the time this is how it works it is a bit misleading I have to say and again, I don't know the concentration of retinol and they are typically the type of active oil. It is very important to know the concentration. So again, it is a pass for me. The other line is the PhysioLift. Basically, they have no gold standard uh, active. They all retail around 25 to 30 euros. So again, a path. One of the most recent launch is what they call the Derm Absolute. So this one is based on Bakuko. So this is an ingredient where we have some um, valid data. The whole idea behind Avin is to not irritate the skin, even though they have perfume. This doesn't make sense. Because of this, most of the active that they are going to use are supposed to be less irritating than others. But again, with Bakukol, if you don't know the concentration, I am I won't be able to tell you if it's really going to change um, anything. If I recall properly the paper, but you can check my video about Bakukol but you need around 2% of Bakukol. Here it is not disclosed, so I don't know. So again, for the price, you don't exactly know what you pay for. So they have a serum, they also have uh, two cream, one for the day, another one for the night, that is called a night balm. So the serum seems to have a high concentration of Bakukol because it is pretty high on the list, but you also have fragrance pretty high up on the list of ingredients, which is something that I really dislike. Most of the time when a brand does this and put the fragrance super high up and also the preservative is mean that the other ingredients are in a tiny, tiny uh, concentration. Most of the time the perfume in skincare, they are at maximum 1%, but most of the time it is the whole point. 5%, they all point 0.1%, so very low concentration. So the rest of the ingredient after it is like tiny, tiny. Again, would I buy it? The serum for sure, no. The two cream, they are not that bad, especially the one for the night. And also actually the one for the day, it is based on chia butter. Again, it looks, it seems to have a lot of perfume, which is not amazing. So now let's move on to the products that I really love. So Avin, they have a line that is simply amazing. This is the Tolerance Extreme line and oh my god this one is so so good and they are the very few brands that can do this and I really love this. So this all line has one character, has two characteristics actually. The first one is a very very simple formula that contains zero irritants which I absolutely love. So you will not find any weird botanical extract, no essential oils, no perfume, which I really love. And it's very, very simple formula. On top of this, it is 100% sterile. Therefore, it doesn't require any preservatives because one of the cone of preservatives is that it could also trigger allergic reaction. And this is simply uh, magnificent. So currently at home, I only have two products from the line. I used to have um, all of them. So the first one is this bad boy right here, which is the cleansing lotion. So it comes in this pack. The dispenser is quite um, unique. You need to press it pretty hard because all the product here can come out, but nothing can goes uh, inside, which is why it is still uh, sterile. So the way that I like to use it, especially if you have super sensitive skin, hyper skin barrier, I like to use this one as a first cleanser, but it will not going to remove um, any waterproof makeup, but also as a skin protectant when you are going to take your shower. So before you take your shower, when you know that you will uh, put water on your face, and if your face really react badly to water, you are going to coat your face with uh, this one, and like this, it will be protected. And after the shower, just use a really damp cotton to slightly 
remove the excess of uh, the milk. This product is also magnificent to simply uh, cleanse the skin of your uh, children. I love this one. The other one is um, the three product from the line. So they have the mask that I currently have that is very similar to the cream and also the emulsion. The emulsion is so, so good. The texture is on fleek. It is um, it almost uh, it is almost watery, very milky. I really like, like it. It is based on squalane. The cream and also the mask are based on shea butter. They are very, very similar. The mask is a little bit less moisturizing than um, the cream. So definitely, if you have super dry skin, go for the cream. If you have more uh, normal to slightly dry to even on your skin type, use the emulsion. What I love about those one is that you can also use them when you have super impure skin barrier or simply if you want to try retinol at one percent if you want to try tretinoin if you already are on a very harsh acne treatment those products are excellent because they are not going to irritate your skin another product that i love from that from the line is this one this is the extremely gentle cleanser lotion very simple they have they have this product like for years super simple super gentle this is excellent to cleanse uh, your skin as a second cleanser i also like to use it to cleanse my hands when i am at home i didn't take the subway so i'm not too too dirty i like to use this one to simply uh, cleanse my hand because it is so gentle also if you happen to come in france this is super inexpensive so the last product that i want to show you is of course sunscreen <laughs> what a surprise if you are not new to my channel you will know that i have a strong addiction to sunscreen and i do encourage you to also be addicted to sunscreen it is very important to find the good sunscreen for you so first of all what i like is that avin uh, does not in the sun protection line uh, propose and offer sunscreen with an SPF lower than 30, which is excellent. Minus those bloody moisturizers with SPF 20, like what? Um, so most of them are an SPF of 50 plus, which is exactly what you want. Whatever your skin color, you need an SPF 50 plus and do not go below it. I wanted to present you the sunscreen for a simple reason is because the combination of organic filters and not chemical filters, it is written um, on the damn website. This is an improper term. Even mineral based sunscreen are chemicals. Water is also a chemical. So this is um, not a good term. It is organic filters. The combination of organic filters is very different from uh, typically the type of sunscreen that you find. Therefore, if you tend to react to, I would say, more classic sunscreen, definitely try the one from Avin because they are very different. So they have, uh, so first I'm just going to talk about the filters. So they have the holy combination, like I, I like to say, they have the Tinozol M that is an amazing broad spectrum uh, filters that absorb UVB, UVA type 2, also UVA type 1, and a little bit of visible light. So it is a little bit similar to zinc oxide, but even better because it absorbs even more UV light. And this is combined with the beautiful Tinos of S, like this is the holy combo. So Tinos of S, it is also broad spectrum filters, UVB, UVA type 2, and also UVA type 1. So perfect match in heaven. On top of this, it has avobenzone to complement the UVA type 1, especially absorption, again, amazing. And the last one is Iscotrinizol. And Iscotrinizol in an, is an excellent filter to filter UVB and also a little bit of UVA type 2. And if you look at the curve of absorption of Tinoz of S, for example, but if I recall correctly, also Tinoz of M, it goes a little bit lower for UVA type 2. So it's so, so clever to have had this uh, filter. You also don't find um, octinoxide, for example, homosalate, um, ethyl exyl salicylate. Those one, you could also react to them or octocrine. And this is why I want to present you uh, the sunscreen today. The downside, of course, is because it contains tinozol M that also absorb a little bit on the visible light. It also means that it had that they have a white cast. This is not a dreadful white cast, but still it is uh, visible. So they have different formulation. They have a cream, they have different fluids. They have um, also a sort of hybrid, like a BB cream that is actually quite good, uh, but they only have one shade, which is very, very bad. Hello, there's people with darker skin tone here. And they also have a spray, so I don't have them all, but I have quite a few. So first of all, the cream, like I said, 
SPF 50 plus, so the cream is definitely targeted for those of you who have a uh, drier skin type for sure. Or simply if you go to the beach or you um, or to the swimming pool, and this one would be a good formulation to counteract the, the dryness. And it is also available in a fragrance-free formula. On a day-to-day -day basis, I find uh, the cream a little bit too moisturizing for me and I do prefer the fluid version. So the two that I have, I have the fluid without any perfume. And I also have the mattifying one, which is in the clean and slime. So supposedly for those of you who have acne. So I don't recall if the one anti-acne is fragrance-free. The difference between the two is simply that the one for acne does have uh, zinc oxide. So it could be a good option if, if you have acne. Both texture are actually pretty similar to the cream. The difference in that uh, the finish is more matte. It is not overly... Um, a liquidy so in a sense that is good because it will help to have an even layer on the con side it it doesn't blend super easily on uh, the skin so the last one that i want to show you is this one this is uh, the b protect so this one is a bb cream so it comes white and when you are rubbing in the bb cream you are going to squish all the little pigments and the color is going to develop. It is definitely on the pinky side. It is a little bit too dark for my skin type, but it does make the skin pretty nice. So definitely if you are a little bit darker than me or you just want to um, to have uh, to be darker simply, uh, this one could be um, a nice option. And also you don't need makeup on top of this. What I really dislike about it is that there is only one shade. There are people here with darker skin tones. So those damn brands, especially like Avin, La Roche-Posay, all those brands that have a ton of money, they can make a sunscreen for all skin types. And you don't have a, an option with Avin, which I don't like. Something that I forgot to mention is that this one also contains perfume and it is pretty fragrant, uh, I have to say. So if you don't like the fragrance, you will really dislike um, this one. But still, it is a nice option for those of you who want to have sunscreen plus I would say the makeup look, this one is a good option if the shade, of course, uh, corresponds. So the last that I want to show you are the mineral base uh, sunscreen. So they have, um, I would say, two categories. They have the fluid and the mineral cream. So those two only use titanium dioxide as UV filters. Titanium dioxide is an excellent UVB absorbent, UVA type 2 and a little bit of UVA type 1 and this it depends on the size of the filters depending on the size it will absorb a little bit more of UVA type 1 or a little bit less but overall this is not optimal so this is not product that I'm going to recommend however they have those two fluid mineral that I have here or mineral fluid in English maybe <laughs> yeah mineral fluid that exists in non-tinted and in uh, tinted and those two use zinc oxide and titanium dioxide probably a very high concentration of zinc oxide because this is the first uh, the first ingredient i don't know obviously the proper concentration but i would expect that those two mineral sunscreen are one of the best in the market just in terms of spf and uva protection one of the main downside of mineral based Sunscreen is that the UVA protection is significantly lower than an organic base simply because with zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, you cannot achieve a very high UVA protection, which is why you mostly see on my channel organic base uh, sunscreen, but I always provide you with a variety of different organic based um, sunscreen anyway. The problem with those two is that if you go to the beach, they could be okay, but on a day-to-day -day basis, they are uh, almost impossible to use because they are very thick, uh, pretty difficult to blend, but also very uh, tacky. The white cast in this one is so strong, and with this one, the shade is instantly uh, dark. So those two baby are not bad because they will provide an excellent protection, I'm pretty sure of it. The problem is that this one has a white cast that is so strong that even I cannot wear it on a daily basis unless you are on the palest, you have the fairest skin on planet earth, maybe you will like it. And this one, I mean, the color is pretty dark, so definitely this is not for my skin tone. If you have medium skin tone, definitely you can try it, but only if you have super dry skin or else I don't think you will uh, like it. I hope you like this video. Please comment down below and tell me if you want me to review maybe more product from Avina, if there is any product that you will be really interested in. 
If you like this video, please thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to ring the little bell to not miss any of my new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram. I am Cyril Laurent. I have a lot of stuff here. You can also learn a lot of tips and I talk a lot about skincare in my stories, but also in my posts. I thank you so, so much for being here and I will see you next time. Au revoir.